Chapter 16 As the storm clouds continued to gather over the house and land, Damianos was getting tired of waiting for Dan and Malou. He feared the rain and lightning most of all. He looked at the house beyond the grass meadow and wondered if he could take shelter below one of the ex extending eaves along the back patio. He had a choice. He could venture near the house or he could take refuge into the forest behind him. Although he wished with all his heart to return to the house and to Selangi one day, his troubled mind and the incessant rumbling of his thoughts had prevented him to take a step in that direction for years now, a war he didn't enjoy waging. He couldn't get away from being this ephemeral, mystical ghost that he had imagined to be and had been condemned to remain until he would be delivered from the grip of evil when the book, his book, would be returned to him. However, he also knew that taking possession of the ancient volume would be far from enough to liberate him from the nightmare. He knew the people who would find it would have to open it. Salangi knew where the key was, but would Dan and Malou be smart enough to find the book first? That was the real question. Out of answers and hearing the first drops of rain falling over the foliage above his head, Damianos retreated slowly and carefully into the forest, going to the patio, although a good shelter was yet taking too much of a risk for him at this point. He didn't want Salangi to see him. May I ask how you knew which words were in the book's title? Malou asked, fixing her gaze on the old lady while keeping her hand on the Greek volume in Dan's lap. You must have known you were the one who gave us all the clues. Salangi nodded and smiled timidly. Are you telling us that you're in on this charade? Dan erupted, suddenly realising what Malou had been asking. I wouldn't call it a charade per se, Dan, but as I told you before, none of the people Damien O's sent over the years believed the book existed. But how did you find out what the title could be? That's what we're asking, Malou repeated. It's because of my husband. What do you mean, your husband? What has he got to do with all of this? Dan was getting agitated. Time was running out. Everything, actually, Salangi blurted. OK, I think you'd better tell us what happened to him before we open this book. Malou said, tapping a finger on its cover. It's too long of a story, dear, but I'll answer your question about the title. A few days before Damien died... Did you say Damien? As in the Greek Damianos? Dan shouted flabbergasted. Salangi shook her head. Well, no, not in the sense you mean. Damianos was our cat. My cat, actually. And my husband gave him the name Damianos because he was forever trying to get people to do his bidding by opening the door for him in the middle of the night, or getting him fish when I only had chicken to feed him, all that sort of thing. But really, Damien was nothing like that, I can assure you. He was kind and loving and really hard-working. OK, Salangi, let's go back to the words of the title, if you don't mind, Malou said soothingly. Well, as I told you, it was a few days before Damien died that he asked if I remembered where the book recounting the tale of the Twelve Labours of Hercules was. Frankly, I couldn't remember ever seeing it on any of the shelves and we began looking for it but Damien was very weak from his illness by then and I did most of the searching by myself and before he died he asked me to bring him some shepherd's tea I had never heard of such a thing before and it was only when I went to the herbalist at the edge of the town that I finally found it Salangi stopped to wipe the tears that were menacing to roll down from her eyes with a trembling hand but when I brought the cup to him he was on his last breath what about the key? How did you find out where it was and what it was for? Malou asked. Oh, that was because of Damianos that I found it, Salangi paused. After his funeral, I saw Damianos sitting on our bed, looking, staring actually at the night table, and when I opened it, I found that key. Then that cat went berserk all of a sudden and tried to rip it off my hand, and that's when I put it somewhere where he couldn't get to it without choking on the face powder. Wow, that was clever, Dan remarked. Salangi threw him a thin yet grateful smile, but it disappeared the instant the three of them heard the crack of lightning that struck the roof and was now rolling in a ball of fire out of the fireplace. Salangi leaped out of her chair while Dan and Malou split just in time before the bolt of lightning scorched through the sofa to rip it in half. Horrified, Malou, still holding the key, slammed her back against the bookshelf behind her, while Dan, book in hand, plunged face down to the hallway floor. Salangi huddled in a far corner of the living room, screamed for them to get out. "'Get out of here, both of you!' You've got the book now. Not waiting for the fire to eat at everything it had touched in the room, Malou ran into the hallway and flattened her body against that of her husband. We need to get out of here, Dan, she whispered to him, panting. No need to tell me twice, he replied, getting to his feet, only to realise the front door had already caught on fire. Stay down, he yelled to Malou, getting back on his hands and knees. Let's get to the kitchen and the back door. Quick, come to the patio, they heard Salangi shout as she trotted as best she could ahead of them. 
Upon reaching the back door and Dan opening it, wired to rush out with Malou and Salangi, the house at their back seemed to sigh, and in a whiff of smoke above its roof returned to its former quiet and decrepit self. Astonished, Salangi, Malou and Dan, still sheltered from the rain under the patio's awning, looked up at the sky and then, poking ahead from under the eaves, noticed that nothing of the walls or windows seemed touched by fire or smoke. They rounded the house quickly until they came to the front door. It was intact, not a burnt mark on it. But now they were hesitant to return inside for fear of troubling the devil, or whoever had decided to interrupt their conversation minutes earlier. Let's get you in there, Salangi, Dan suggested, pushing the door ahead of the shaking old lady. You're soaking wet. Thank you, she said, walking into the hallway and grabbing a shawl from the poor mantu and throwing it around her shoulders while leaving Malou and Dan to stand on the threshold. Come in, you must see this. Are you sure? Is everything all right? Malou asked, taking a few tentative steps indoors. Yes, yes, I'm sure, Salangi replied to the couple, who was now stepping across the archway. Amazing, Dan said. Nothing has been disturbed, the sofa and the chairs, even the carpet, are all like nothing happened here. Do you think that was another of Damianos's tricks? Malou asked, looking around her. I wouldn't put it past him. No, no, Dan. Damianos is the tamer of people's minds. He's not the one responsible for instilling such fear and destruction to their surroundings. This is much worse than anyone could have expected. Then who, Salangi? Malou queried, returning to sit on the sofa. I don't know, dear. I frankly don't know. But whoever is behind this little episode must also have been behind the fire that started when I burned my arm, remember? The still trembling old lady sat down again in the chair facing the sofa. Yes, of course, Malou said. That's when you fainted and you were transported to the hospital. Exactly. But the funny thing was that when I came home, expecting to find my house in ruin, nothing had been touched by the fire. Even the bedroom was exactly the way I remembered leaving it, before the fire. Was that the night after you found the key? Dan asked, sitting himself down beside Malou. Oh no, well, come to think of it, yes. What do you mean? Well, in reality, I mean, when my husband really died all those years ago, I had not found the key yet that night. But when I came back to my past, I found the key after the funeral, as I told you, and you're right, Dan, it was the night of the fire. So Damianos, your cat, is still the one who showed you where the key was after your husband died, right? Yes, that's right, Salangi said, shaking her head now. But it's all so confusing. I know, I'm sorry. Don't be sorry, Salangi, Malou interposed. But that's all when you started fearing that Damianos had something to do with everything that was happening to you? Yes, absolutely. You see, Damien asked me about the Book of Hercules as I explained, and he asked for the shepherd's tea, but it was only when I returned to my past that Damien o showed me where the key was, and I hid it in the face powder. After a long moment of silence between the three of them, Dan turned to Malou. Do you want to open the book now, or should we wait until we find Damien o's? I don't know, Dan. Malou looked up at Salangi. What do you suggest we do? Oh, my dear Malou, I couldn't possibly tell you what to do. Now that we know the risk, I prefer you to go and find that damn feline before you open the book. Yet I would like to find out what's written on these pages, Salangi said, pointing to the book in Dan's lap. Why don't you come with us? Oh, goodness gracious, Dan, I couldn't possibly leave the house, Salangi cut in. I haven't been out there in ages. But before you say no, Salangi, maybe you should listen to Dan, Malou put in helpfully. Well, yes, Dan said, looking at the two women in turn. You wouldn't be in any danger out there. We all have our dream catchers, and it seems to me that you're in greater danger here, even with all the dream catchers hanging all around you. So what do you say? If it meant for you to find out what this book contains, wouldn't you like to come with us, and we'll be right beside you? I suppose you're right. I could take a warm coat and my cane, Salangi said, getting to her feet. But will I be able to come back to my house afterward? Dan and Malou exchanged a glance. We can't promise anything, Salangi, Malou replied. But maybe you could come back to your house the way it was before all this happened, or even be able to get back to Pahoki if it became possible after we opened the book. Salangi nodded. OK, and I guess it's a lot better than having no hope at all, isn't it? That a girl, Dan said, putting the book under his arm and rising to his feet.